I see everything in life as a game with its specific goals, rules, and interactions. As a kid already, I couldn't make the difference between the playground and the classroom. Whether we played hide and seek, soccer, or mathematics, the rules were different, but the goal looked the same, to reach the top of the leaderboard. Education itself felt like a game, with its levels to pass, its grades and rewards. But when I thought that I finally made it to the top of my leaderboard by joining this great university, HEC Paris, the game didn't stop. On the contrary, the playground extended to the world's dimension. The classes of law were drawing the rules of play for a peaceful society. In economics, we talked about game theory or zero-sum games framework. We even defined our own avatar, the Homo economicus. We tried to imagine its potential gameplay strategies for the future, even if I must say that its objectives and goal to maximize profit was a bit narrow and boring for a game. And all around, after class, I would hear people, or should I say players, talking about their wishes to level up or raise the game, while others were laughing stupidly at the ones they called the losers. I even remember a friend telling me, this project is a game changer, I'm telling you. You should join me. It will be a win-win situation. So, are you game? Was reality just a game to him, or was he playing with me? Growing up, I had discovered and lost a few times to another game before I found the right teammate. It is the continuous game of love that you can only win with the other, never against. From education, career, to love and friendship, the game was everywhere. So I see everyone as a player, and all of us as homo ludens. Homo ludens rather than homo sapiens, as we organize and develop our societies with social, political, economic games that we design with goals, rules, and interactions that go way beyond reason and logic. But you can only play when you are not hungry. It is only when you surpass your biological life and quest for survival that you start playing at civilization. You enter the social life and its worlds of fictions and contingency rather than necessity. Fictions that, if played collectively, transform reality. So that the game is not the opposite of reality. It is the medium through which we realize fictions in real life. And this is our challenge. As we grow up, we tend to separate the game from reality. As a pure moment of fun and escape, we forget that in every activities of our everyday life, even the most serious ones, we continue to play social games with human rules. But we take them for granted, as if they were necessary natural laws. And we abandoned our very role in redesigning them. More than a challenge, it is a danger when most of the games we play in society are not compatible with the world we inhabit. I see that most of the games in life have the same design. Since Heracles completed his 12 labors and built the Olympic stadiums to honor Zeus, we humans have kept on competing at the games to elevate ourselves to the gods' attention. But the gods left and the world changed. The vast majority of our games, however, continue to follow the same pattern. The goal always is to win, and you mostly win alone. The rules are set by a few humans only and are here to protect ownership. The interaction mostly is competition. For example, we find these mechanics in the economic game we have been playing for the past centuries, capitalism, where the goal is accumulation of wealth, the rules are set by the market and are here to protect private property, and the interaction is free competition. In 1902 already, Elizabeth Maggie designed an actual board game in order to demonstrate the social risks of these capitalism features. It is called the landlord's game, a game about realty and taxation. 
She invented this infinite loop, this infinite board game, continuous path, in a time when most board games had a clear start and end. And on that board, you would basically visit different New York City places with their purchase price and rental value, Wall Street being the most expensive. The goal would be for you to acquire properties, build monopolies, and wait for others to basically get trapped in your places. You would win when everyone is bankrupt. I'm sure that this game sounds familiar, but when Elizabeth Maggie designed the landlord's game, she wanted to raise awareness on the absurdity of such a system, not to promote it. With the fun and easy medium of a game, she was able to educate people on a system that would always impoverish tenants, enrich the property owners, and facilitate monopoly. The sad irony is that Elizabeth Moggy lost the property of her game that would soon become the famous symbol that we know of capitalism for kids, kids that would then grow up with this monopoly's goals and rules in mind. The problem is that as grown-ups, we play actual capitalism like we played Monopoly as kids, as if it didn't have any impact in the real world. But these goals are not compatible with the very board we are playing with, with the only world we are living in. Infinite growth is impossible in a finite world, just as infinite loops of wealth accumulation was impossible in a finite board of resources. We have designed rules and interactions for these capitalist games that contradict the very laws of a bigger game that we forgot we were playing, the game of life. And in the midst of the Anthropocene, blind to the consequences of our actions, we continue to follow the same rules. It is business as usual, game as usual. But this individual play leads us to a collective game over. A game over that is not only the end of our capitalist game, but the end and extinction of our very ecosystems, the end of the game of life. If the capitalist game was successful in enlarging the player base for the past centuries and take most of us out of hunger, it now reaches its limits. As the ultimate winner will own the majority of resources in the world, it will have no one else to play with especially in a world where workers are not incentivized to play or even replaced by machines. Like in the Monopoly, the game ends when the winner bankrupts everyone. Given that 25 people in the world today own as much as half of the global population, it looks like we are getting there. The end of the game of life, as we destroy the very resources we were playing with, the very world and map we are playing on. Now, we understand that we can never play against, but only with and for the planet. We play actual capitalism like we played the monopoly. But this is not only the problem, it is also an opportunity. It means that this is just a game with human rules, not natural laws. It also means that we can reinvent them. I see all of us as players. And before we lose the world, let us remember that a game is only a game if we choose to play. I also see every one of us as a game designer, which means that another game is always possible. Elizabeth Maggie herself imagined an alternative version to the monopolist sets of rule of the landlord's game. It was called the prosperity set. In that configuration of the game, each time a player would acquire a property, all of the other players would gain something. And the game was won by all when the player who had started with the least money had doubled it. With this second set of rules, Elizabeth Maggie was showing an alternative path to the mainstream economics of her time. I believe that we can get inspired by Elizabeth Maggie to become game changers. If Elizabeth Maggie focused on the social risks of the capitalism game, we now have to acknowledge its environmental damages. Change the game so that the goal should be to play collectively and not win alone. So that the rules 
should be designed with all living things on a commons framework instead of just being designed by a few humans, and so that the interaction should be about cooperation instead of competition. The good news is that we already see a few examples of these sets of rules everywhere in the planet. For example, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, the UN Agenda for 2030, stipulates a very interesting goal, which is the 17th. It says partnership for the goals, which means that facing such complexity of challenges until 2030, the only way forward is cooperation. The new law of the jungle, if you may, and maybe the rebirth of the comments that we see those days also illustrates that. With a few friends, we decided to take this matrix of challenges and goals of the United Nations to make it a concrete goal map for games. We created the World Game, an impact game studio that is dedicated to translate real-world challenges into mobile games so that we can crowdsource solutions everywhere. But the first challenge that we tackled was about reinventing the very fictions and narratives that games convey. We built Legacy. And Legacy is a reboot of Mario in the age of the Anthropocene. You remember that Mario would basically accumulate any possible resource. Well, in our game, as soon as you finish the first level, you don't go to another world or another planet to find new resources again. You actually come back to the same world 20 years later, playing your own kid. The bad news is that you are left with the resources that your parents, meaning yourself, left. So that the goal of the game is not to accumulate resources, but to continue to play, for you to run sustainably and be able to build your legacy. 10 years after I joined HEC Paris as a student, I'm now lucky to be a professor for the Sustainability and Social Innovation Masters. I teach future economics with fictions and games. For instance, we play multiplayer negotiation of resources where biodiversity is not a resource anymore, but a player with us. Last week, we did a tribute to Elizabeth Maggie by having a small game jams when, where every small team that we have did an amazing work in trying to build new sets of alternatives for many different economic problems, whether it be human-machine collaboration or access to energy. Because we are sure that this is the moment in which we need to create new sets of rules and just not one other. I see life as a game, and I know that I'm lucky to be able to. It means that I'm not hungry. It also means that, like many of us here, I started life with the easy setting. But to go from a life player to a game changer, the first thing we need to do is to share this luck with others, to invite everyone to play in an urgent moment in which we need to redefine our goals and design rules that make our legacy possible. And for this talk to continue after its end, there is one game that I would like to play with you. It is called Eleusis, and its goal is to find its rules. It is a card game where a player designs a secret rule called the rule of the world. All the other players are called the researchers, and they conduct experiments to try and find this rule of the world. I believe that this is the quest ahead of us, playing all together to navigate the mazes, mysteries, and challenges of our time, and find the rules that will allow the next generation of players to continue the game. So dear life players, let's find the rule of the world together and ask ourselves, what games do we want to play for the future? What goals, which rules will we create? Game on. It's our turn.